What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gust, and I'm back in the physics classroom. And today, we're talking about center of mass. So we talked recently about the idea of simplifying, or maybe it complicating, I don't know. I think it was simplifying our collisions, though, of two objects. We talked about impulse, and that would be forces on one object in our scenarios, uh, where an outside force changes its momentum. But then we talked about in collisions, there's typically two objects. And if we incorporate both objects into our system, we can then see that there's actually a conservation uh, of momentum expression that we can write because there's no outside forces. Those internal collision forces are inside my two-body system. And so now I can start thinking about the um, conservation of momentum instead of the momentum, or I'm sorry, change in momentum and impulse theorem. So uh, today what we discussed in class was about the center of mass. And we discussed that the center of mass is an oversimplified um, way for us to track the momentum of the two-body system um, through a problem. So uh, first things first, let's talk center of mass. Center of mass is an interesting term. Center of mass, literally described, is the average location of mass. Oh, a cool little demo you can do at your house is take some object that's oddly shaped and place both hands at the end of that object and start moving your hands towards each other. And naturally, because of normal force and friction, naturally your hands will find the center of mass of the object. So I've got this weird broom here uh, that I found in the classroom. And so where is the average location of mass? Well, it's located between my hands. I'll try it again. I start both hands at the edge and I pull them together. I just keep moving my hands together and eventually I end up finding the average location of mass. And what we always find is that the average location of mass or center of mass is located more or nearer the heavier side. So this broom clearly is heavier on the bristle side than it is the handle side. And so the center of mass is located somewhere nearer the bristle side. Obviously, if an object is heavier in a two-body system, the average location of mass is going to be nearer that object. This is what the center of mass is, the average location. So in order for us to analyze this in terms of a collision, let's look at an example. Let's look at a problem up here. So I've got a big object. Let's call this big object over here object A. Let's call this little object over here object B. And when I'm thinking about where the average location of mass of this system is going to be, it's going to be somewhere near our object A. This is where it is. Okay? And so let's say object A and B are going to collide and stick together. So this is before and after. Let's say A is moving in this direction and B has no velocity to begin with. But after they collide... A and B are now stuck together in a perfectly inelastic collision, and they are moving slowly. Where is the center of mass now? The center of mass is still between A and B, but it's closer to A still. It's not directly in the middle. It's more near A than it is B, even though they're stuck. It's located somewhere inside A's mass. This is our center of mass. Okay, and what I'm thinking about here, this is a two-body system. I would say that the momentum of the system here is conserved. It's equal to the momentum of the system down here. The momentum of the system is equal to the mass of A times the velocity of A plus the mass of B times the velocity of B. And this is just the momentum of A plus the momentum of B. That's what it is. If I think about the total momentum of my system, it's just the sum of the individual momentum. Uh, and so the same would be true after the collision. There's no outside force on this two-body system. I could write the exact same expression. I could say the total momentum or the momentum of the system afterward is now the new mass times the new velocity. Um, I'm sorry, not new mass, but it would be the same mass times the new velocity after the collision plus the mass of B times the new velocity after the collision. Now they stick together, so we've gone ahead and said, hey, that means I can add my masses. They're considered one object now times this final velocity, and this is going to be equal to the momentum of my system. This is great. I can go ahead and, and analyze the individual parts of my system to help me figure out what happens before and after a collision. Well, I also want to discuss, like, what if I want to just find the momentum of the system? I could add these two things together, certainly. But what is 
the momentum of my system. The momentum of my system is always going to be the total mass. It's the system. It's the mass of the system. So it's total mass. And it's velocity of the system, which is weird to think about the velocity of the system. How is my system moving? Well, we've boiled our system down to a single point. We've boiled our system down to just one point where most of the mass, not most of the mass, the average mass is located. And we call that point the center of mass. So when I think about what is the speed or velocity of my system, what I'm really figuring out is the velocity of the center of mass of my system. So when I think about the total momentum, it's total mass times the velocity of the center of mass, which is my system in a point. My system obviously isn't a point. It's, a point. it's object A and object B, but we simplify our system to a location known as the center of mass. If I can track that velocity, that is the velocity of my system. And so this is how I would write my expression for the momentum of the system. It's total mass, A plus B, times the velocity of the center of mass. And in this case, I could solve for it. If I knew the final velocity after the collision, I could go ahead and solve for the velocity of the center of mass. I could go ahead and do this. Now, what's even cooler about this is that the velocity of the center of mass remains the same. If I go ahead and look at my before collision and after collision, is there an outside force on my system? The answer is no, there's not. There's just the collision force. So because of this, the velocity of the center of mass doesn't change. It remains the same the entire time. The only time I would see a change in velocity uh, for the center of mass is if there's an outside force like friction acting on it or a wall or a rope, something like that. But I don't have that here. So what I'm looking at right now is just tracking the center of mass and its velocity so that I know the total system's momentum. This is what I'm looking at. Let me give you a different example, okay? Let's go look at our track again. We had the track yesterday. Let's check out the track again today. I've got my track. I've got my two cars. Ah. All right. So my two carts. One is much, much, much larger than the other one. And let's see how we do this. I'm going to start these carts touching each other. And obviously these carts uh, are, I'm maybe not obviously, but cart, red cart is much heavier than the blue cart, which is why I actually want to roll this this way. Also, did you just see that cool application of Newton's first law? That was pretty cool. So this one is much more massive. The red is much more massive than the blue one. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, explode these apart. And if I think about where the center of mass is located now, the center of mass is located somewhere nearer the red cart because it's, pro it's probably twice as massive. So it's definitely located somewhere over here within the red cart. Let's watch. Let's watch, let's watch, let's watch. So both cars go and shoot flying off of each other. What I want to appreciate though is let's watch how much faster the blue cart exits the screen or exits the center than the red cart. How much faster does the blue cart do, launch off compared to the red cart? The blue cart launches much faster and then the red cart reaches it uh, at, at, at a much less time. The point of this is that the center of mass, because there are no outside forces, the center of mass remains located here. We're gonna try this again. And I want you to go ahead at home and continue to pause your screen at various times. Pause your screen and analyze. Where is the center of this mass? You can kind of track it with your finger, but where is the center of mass? This is much heavier. The center of mass is located here. We're kind of trying to figure out where would a fulcrum need to be if these two carts were balanced. Let's check this out. Let's even try this. Let's go ahead and make a fulcrum. Let's go ahead and grab a, a wooden block or two. I have two wooden blocks. I put these two blocks 
underneath uh, my track and balance this. Should balance somewhere around 120, it does. Now let's go ahead and bring this foot to center of mass. right on top of the wood blocks. Okay, right now, this is balanced. The center of mass is located right above the wood blocks. If the center of mass remains above the wood blocks, again, no outside forces, the center of mass should not change its momentum, it should stay the same. If it's going to, then this balance beam or this teeter-totter should remain level until the blue card hits the edge. Let's see if this works. Did you see that? You notice that even though both objects spread apart, even though both objects are moving away from each other, the center of mass remains located directly above that fulcrum. This is because there's no outside force in the center of mass, therefore the momentum of the center of mass is not changing as those two carts move. Now again, the blue cart hits the wall, outside force, and it causes that center of mass to start changing, okay? These are the basic ideas of center of mass. If you have questions, drop it in the comments, send me an email, or ask me in class. Until next time, see ya!